Hello everyone, welcome to episode 29 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. In this series, I'm essentially trying to get 2000 ELO on my chess.com rapid rating. And yeah, I'm aware my time's ticking down, don't worry about it. Um, and I'll talk you through my thought process while we play. I have the new edition of a notebook. I've been doing it for the past few episodes, but basically if I have ideas during the game that I want to flesh out more in the post-game analysis with the help of a computer and making it easier to visualize without me just drawing like a bunch of random arrows and whatever that are hard to follow so that you guys can, you know, learn some new ideas, educate and hopefully entertain and have a good time. So. My opponent plays the perk defense, or the peers, I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to pronounce it, which is e4, d6. We are going to play knight c3. There's a bunch of ways you can play against this setup. In the past, I've played like d4, c3, bishop e3, which is an interesting system. But for a lot of the viewers of this channel, I would assume a lot of you play the Vienna. And so today, if my opponent cooperates, I'm going to try and like show how you can use a Vienna sort of setup against a peer's defense. Because then you don't have to study quite as much theory, and it makes things a lot easier for you from like just a time basis because you know sorry I'm eating some dates as well I'm absolutely starving <laughs> um got a bowl of dates here sorry but sorry what I was saying is that learning a ton of theory for a bunch of different openings can take a lot of time right and I know that I mean I'm a fairly good chess player I'm rated about 1950 to 2000 over the board classical, which translates to at least a couple hundred points higher online, which is why 2000 is the goal for this rating climb series, because it should be very achievable. And, you know, even I don't want to spend that much time learning opening theory. Don't get me wrong, in the past I have definitely had to do that and just put in the time learn my basics and get a nice easy repertoire but from there i like to stick to what i know sometimes i'll have to come up with some nuances especially if i'm playing an over the board game and i get the feeling my opponent has prepared for me in which case i might have to spring something new but that's also part of the reason why i play a lot of weird offbeat gambits anyway my opponent goes c6 classic idea and he's trying to control the d5 square. So we're going to go <clears throat> bishop c4. And this is a little bit risky. Because my opponent could play b5. Which is a very common idea in the perk defense. Which would force my bishop back to b3. Well not force it. I could retreat it like this way. But then bishop c4 is stupid. So we could see b5, bishop b3 and b4 attacking my knight. I'll probably drop my knight to e2, and then my opponent could try and play the move d5. He doesn't do that, okay? Now, he is technically threatening to play d5 now, as he has ample defense. We could try and stay stubborn with queen 2 f3, which, you know, through the pawn defense d5 square, but then bishop g4 is a bit annoying. You could argue that queen g3 is good because after pawn moves, takes, takes. You can argue that the knight is overloaded for sure. But I do not want to play that. I am going to play bishop to b3. I will note, however, like I said in my little note, little, little notebook, queen f3, with bishop g4 lines, is definitely something that you could consider. But we're not going to do it. Here we can play d4. For sure. But like I said, I'm going to try and play it in a Vienna style. So we're going to go d3. I'm also aware of the fact that my opponent is a lot lower rated than me. 
And I think that's simply just because a lot of people do not play Rapid online. I was waiting in the queue for about a minute before I got my match. And, you know, the guy is about 400 points lower rated. So it's just interesting. Here I'm going to play Knight G to E2. And my thought process is that I want to make H4, H5 or F4, F5 work. My knight on f3 can't really support either push, whereas a knight on g3 going through e2 does support both these pushes. So that's why I developed like that. h3 is attempting move to take up the g4 square, but I want to push the pawn in all reality. So I'm going to go bishop g5, pressure the knight. <clears throat> if my opponent wants to push h6, we're going to drop back. My opponent, again, he can play d5. My idea after d5 was to go e5. He does now prevent that because the knight controls that square. But he also now can't play d5 because he has blocked his own queen's defense of d5. So there's <clears throat> no need to panic. I'm instead going to play the move queen d2. This now prevents the move h6 because I have a queen and bishop battery. It also, prevent, bleh, also prepares queenside castling. And now I'm ready to start lobbing the h-pawn down the board. Could I castle in this position? Absolutely. But there's no rush. He's not opening the center. Like I said, d5 doesn't work because we have too much control over that square, which is the like a big idea of the Vienna game in general. So I'm instead tempted to play knight to g3. Now the problem with going h4 immediately is my opponent could respond with h5. If he plays h5 premature, like just off of his own back. That might be a bit annoying. So I am drawn towards the move bishop h6. And whether he takes me and my queen lands there or not, if he goes bishop to h8, which might be his idea. Because now the rook is no longer under attack with the move rook e8. Pretty common idea. Then he can no longer play h5 because my bishop blocks the pawn. But, if bishop h6, bishop h8, he does have this annoying move, knight g4, which would attack my bishop. However, what if I just don't care? Mm, then the bishop returns to g7, if like knight takes, queen takes, the bishop can return to g7, kick my queen out, and then he can go h5. We don't have to do anything yet, though. So first we're going to queenside castle. First we're going to queenside castle. b5, big move, okay. He's looking for these sorts of ideas. I'm not overly scared. I'm going to go knight g3. Knight g3, again, not only supports the idea of h5, but it also, after b4, gives my other knight a retreating square. Because I don't really want to put it on b1. b1 is incredibly passive. You can claim that it's a good defender from b1, but if anything, it's kind of just cramping the king's position. Okay. That's kind of surprising. Because, can I not just play a4? You might be questioning, why are you pushing pawns in front of your king and allowing him to open the b-file? Yeah, but then I take with the knight, and I close the a-file. That's a good move, though. That's a very good move. So he's pressuring this further, and he's attacking my bishop. If I drop my bishop back, then he's going to take... 
and try and play a three. What if we drop the bishop back? If he takes with the knight, I don't think I'm as concerned. Now, what if we take him? If we take him, then he's going to take my bishop, and then we take back. And then if he takes back and we take back, our structure is completely destroyed. So we have to save the bishop. We have to play bishop a2. By process of elimination, even if I don't like the move, bishop a2 that much, I think we just have to save it. I... Knight c5 for some reason just um, skipped my mind. Hmm. It is within a knight though. It's kind of surprising. Now we don't actually have to take him. If we go h4, he's going to play h5, and our attack kind of stops. So the problem is bishop h6, bishop h6, queen h6, knight c3, then we have to take with the pawn. But our king might be able to hide on d2, and then h4, h5 is coming. This might be risky, <clears throat> but this is what we're going to do. Bishop h6. We're down a pawn. But it's an a pawn. Like, whatever. We've got a very strong bishop. We're trying to trade off his best defender. h4, h5 is on the way. Our knight is supporting some important squares. Our queen is likely about to get into the action. F4, F5 is an idea in the future. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Because now my queen maintains this defense. The only issue I have is to move knight or bishop to g4. It's my only concern. So what if I go F3 first? Then we go for this. Looks good to me. The problem is, well, I'll make a note of this. On move 14, if h4, g4, square, too weak, question mark. So we'll run some lines in the post-game analysis on what happens if I play h4 immediately. But something tells me that knight g4, h4, Five. I don't like the pressure on my knight in that position. Whoa. Knight b2. Okay, so his point is, if king takes... b4... And if my knight moves, then knight takes e4, we'll have a discovered check on the king. And then win my queen. So that's pretty nice. Now I don't actually have to take this. I don't have to take it. What if I do? If I do take, and then b4. We've established I can't move the knight. Then he opens the B file, because the only thing we can do is block off, or one of the only things we can do is play a move like D4, or move the king or something, right? But then he takes and he opens the file, and if the B file is open, we're dead. We cannot allow him to open on the queen side. So I do not want to take this knight. He's attacking our rook. If we push and ignore the attack, and he takes, and we take. The attack looks promising, but I'm not willing to sacrifice a whole exchange for it. So, we are down two pawns. Rook df1, 
looks like a decent move. Just stepping away from this knight. This knight isn't threatening anything else in the position. This also supports a future f4, f5 push. And of course, h4, h5 is still on the cards. Could we go to e1? Is that better? Is supporting this any good? Mm, I don't think so. Mm. I don't know. But maybe f4, f5 is... We're going to put the rook on f1. We're down two pawns. But... So we have a big attack coming. Rookie one was tempting. Like, again, I'm going to note this down. Rookie one was tempting, but I wasn't really sure whether it was the best option or not. So, oh, actually, the rook on e1 would lead me to potential tactics of a bishop ended up on c3 and skewering. So maybe I dodged a bullet there. b4 is played. Attacks my knight. Let's move the knight. Very scary looking position, but we have to maintain our composure. If he plays a4, b3 looks pretty scary. Now, if a4, can we take? That's the question. If he moves the rook here... Oh, we can't move the rook there, actually. It's undefended. Normally, this bishop is uh, out of the way. Or there's like a knight defending the rook or something. So, if a4 and queen takes... The knight is actually under attack now, because we're threatening queen takes. He could play knight g4 in response to that, though. Attacking the bishop and attacking the queen with his bishop. That might work for him. I'm trying to see if there's any tactics, but with like bishop takes f7 and um, like queen a2 stuff. Okay. Bishop to a6. This is still not takeable because of this tactic, so don't go blundering your queen still. This is very difficult position. But I think the most practical option is h4. We need to try and generate some counterplay. I don't think our king is going to get mated in the next couple moves. So that's a bonus. Because yeah, while we've lost two pawns, his pawns are kind of acting as a protective barrier for us. So it's keeping his rooks and queen at bay for now. Okay, yeah. Now if we take, then rook b8 is playable. Queen a3. Maybe queen b6. That looks dead. Ah, but the problem is b3. And one of the points of bishop a6 is after we take, if we take with the c pawn, then knight takes d3 will be a move. I have just realized, however, maybe I should have already played this. e5. Maybe a move attack the knight and if you take then I can actually take this because the discovery is gone but the problem is if e5 I think he can just move the knight and then this knight's just coming in and we've created more problems for ourselves this is pretty pretty tough
This is a problem. Definitely a problem. What do we do about it? What if we go knight to f4, defending d3, and if he goes b3, take, take, yeah, I don't want to take again. There, 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 can I play bishop b1? Defending d3 with the bishop. I don't like taking the bishop off this diagonal though, because it's applying some good pressure. What if I go h5? If h5, b3. Take. Knight takes. King d1, take, take, we're getting completely ripped apart. Okay, what if queen takes? Queen takes, rook b8, queen a3, not pretty. Oh, he does also have this. setting up this. But if here, here, maybe we can take here. I don't think we've got a better option. Black has a lot of threats. And B3 just comes with such venom that I feel like we can't allow it. Yes, I know we're opening the B file and I really didn't want to do that. We might have to tuck our queen onto the a3 square to act as a defensive piece. There's a lot of tactics flying around, but we're just going to have to deal with it. I'm sure we could have played this in a better way, um, and maybe in a quicker way, because we are down to two minutes. But our opponent is playing incredibly well for his rating, so hats off to him. Like, that is incredibly impressive. Okay, you have rook b8. I think queen a3 makes a lot of sense. Defending d3, pressuring the knight, stopping a3, pressuring the pawn. We're just kind of hanging around with the queen. The knight actually doesn't have an exit, which is great. Now, can we actually attack the knight very easily? No, but hey-ho. Okay, queen b6, yeah. Now we can't access e3 because our bishop covers that, which is important. But he doesn't actually have a threat. So, can we push? Our bishop's still doing a good job. Unless I've missed something, I think we can just push. A funny line would be queen b4, h takes g6, queen takes a3, and um, g takes f7, checkmate. That would be a very funny line. I I mean, I, our opponent's not going to fall for that. If um, queen b4 and... T Whoa. What? What? Where's the mate? We covering this? Oh my god. Okay, wow. So his point is, if we take this knight, if we take this knight, then bishop b2 check wins our queen. However, we can play bishop takes f7, forcing king takes, and then take on e4 with discovered check. That forces the king there. We're still in dire straits. Is there a better way to go about this? Can we take and go for the same checkmate pattern? If we take, 
Yes, he can take back. But if... <sighs> what about here? 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 And if he takes the queen, then this is checkmate. Because our rook covers f2. f7, sorry. I really hope I haven't missed anything here. But yeah. Oh no, it's not checkmate. Oh. No, it's not. Because the king has h8. The king has h8. Oh, okay. That's not good. <laughs> Although, we might still have chances, because the king is looking really, really weak. I'm trying to think where I should put my king. Obviously, we don't take, because then his queen gets in, right? So, let's move the king. This is very, very bad, but it's not quite over. Here, we could consider rook takes. I don't think that works because queen comes in and wins our bishop. So bishop here, king here, take. g7 is a threat of mate. If he takes back, then he's mated. If here, sorry, bishop takes, king here, take. What, rook takes might be good though, because if queen here, 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 check. No, let's take with the bishop. We have no time. This is not ideal. Not ideal at all. And we're also down a queen, so let's not forget that, because I just... I just missed that line. I should have take I should have played bishop takes f7 f7 earlier. I'm trying to calculate lines like knight f5 or like bishop g7 but I think we've lost here. I think black has too many attacks on our king. I'm not sure what we are actually threatening though, bishop g7, king here, rook here, king here, rook here. Is that a repetition? Don't know. Okay. Just need to get our king out of checks. Damn it, missed that. Wait. What about this? Oh my god. Dude, you stopped checking me. Take rook takes. We actually have checkmating threats. This is insane. This is... This could be mate. No way is this working. Yeah, he's got to sack his queen. Take with the pawn. How does he stop mate? Rook here? We're not going to take it. Wait. This is mate. Yo! <laughs> what? What on earth just happened? <laughs> How? What? The no, that's actually insane. How have I just won that? I just lost the queen. I literally lost the queen. <laughs> 
this computer analysis is going to be insane. Oh my god. <laughs> guys, guys, if if you're subscribed to the channel already, then I'm delivering for you, right? I'm delivering the fire. If you're not subscribed, holy, what do I have to do to get a subscription at this point? And just, by the way, fair play to my opponent. He played incredibly well that game. So, so well. Like, he's way better than 1500. Again, this isn't me accusing him of cheating or anything. This is me saying he played really, really well. Because I'm a high-rated player, right? I should be rated higher than this anyway. Wow, what a game. Let's get into the analysis. Okay, well, this is an insanely scuffed game. I, w I had 71.3% accuracy. My opponent was 654 My opponent played two brilliant moves. Two brilliant moves as a 1500? That's mad. That is mad. And, I mean, loads of blunders everywhere, basically. This is going to be an interesting game. And even in the opening moves, um, there are so many, like, inaccuracies and whatever. But, I mean, I normally don't play this setup against the peers. And like I was saying, I was surprised he didn't go for this sort of thing. Maybe you don't push B, um, B4 straight away. But this is a common idea in the perk, and we saw him do it later on. He goes C6, Bishop C4, Knight F6, Bishop B3. Again, just getting out of anything coming with tempo on my bishop. Um, I was saying Queen F3 is a move to just stop B5 entirely. But Black could just continue with this plan. Computer likes e5. I was worried about potential problems with bishop g4, but d5 isn't exactly playable, I didn't think. Because if you start trading, then this knight is overloaded. Can't defend both squares at the same time. So I thought I'd point that out, but bishop b3, g6, d3. Again, I should really be expanding with d4. But I was trying to play a Vienna setup. It kind of worked. Knight g2, castle, bishop g5, knight bd7, queen d2, rook e8. The idea of rook e8, I believe, was if he goes b5, I think he was a bit concerned that here he couldn't play bishop a to h8 because I can take the rook. And so he would be forced to trade bishops with me. And I guess he didn't want to do that, which is fair. So rook e8 means that if I now go bishop h6, he has to be the h8 square. I castle, which is apparently a mistake, and in hindsight, I didn't really respect his attack enough. I didn't really have enough respect for it. The computer likes my idea of f3 in this position, and then I guess going for the bishop trade and moves like h4, h5, maybe knight g3, maybe even g4. But I queenside castled, because I didn't think his attack had any venom. I was wrong. Knight g3, a5... I have to go a4 here. I mean, if he plays a4, my bishop is trapped. And if I go a3 to give my bishop a hidey hole, and again, this knight c5, and I guess b4 comes in, and I am screwed. Royally screwed. I was screwed anyway, though. a5, a4, knight c5, bishop a2. Here, I thought I had to retreat the bishop, because if I do something like takes, he's going to completely ruin my structure. I go up a pawn, but at what cost? All the lines are open. A4, queen b3. This knight moving with discoveries with the bishop. Bishop e6. This is game over. Just on the spot. You can't open up your king like this. So I went bishop a2 and I was like, look, I'm going to lose a pawn, but it is what it is. e5 is a move here, which is what I was suggesting later in the game. I didn't see it until very late, and it might have been better earlier on. But I went for bishop h6. He went bishop h8. And I was quite happy to see that move. I was expecting him to take. And then take on c3. Which I said during the game. Because my queen is a bit overloaded. Right? She can't defend both at once. So when the bishop takes, my queen is forced to move over to h6. And can no longer defend the c3 square. Which just massively opens up my king. Right? And then moves like b4 might come in. 
and it's getting pretty scary. But he goes bishop h8, I go f3. Computer doesn't love it, prefers d4. And it prefers d4 because then knight takes b2 is not that good of a move because there is no discovered attack. Still a good position for black. Because c5 and I can't take because of this tactic. But that's what the computer wants. It doesn't mind f3 though. Doesn't It's his second favourite move. But knight takes b2. What a move. And I mean black has a good position even without that. Not winning but good. If he takes on c3 I can't take with the queen anyway. So if I take with the queen then knight takes... No? Knight g4? And if I come back, then we trade on h6, and then bishop g7. Huh. I guess black is just up a clean pawn, and his attack looks a lot more dangerous than mine. And he has a dark squad bishop, and I don't. But knight takes b2, what a move. What a move. Apparently the best idea is to take. The problem is b4, and if I move my knight... Knight takes e4, discovered check, queen dies, right? Apparently here you go d4. And after take, queen take, knight d7, I'm okay? My king can't even retreat to a1 because the bishop is still in its scope. Can't really go to b1 because the b file is open, so I need to go back to c1. C5, E5, this is an absolute mess. Maybe this would have complicated things a bit more. But I thought it was better for me to move my rook. And then computer likes rook to E1 or rook to F1. So we've established I can take, but not really, unless I see kind of far in the future. So I moved my rook. And my idea is, yeah, you want my B2 pawn. Yeah, my position's bad, but you're going to have to prove it now. And he goes b4. He starts to prove it. We retreat to e2. d1, apparently a bit better. But I didn't really want to give him the option of trading knights like this. Because I thought I could pose some problems with trying to trap his knight in the position. That's not the case though. Knight c e2. Bishop h6. That's given a brilliant move because the knight is still left hanging. But this same tactic exists. So bishop a6 isn't real. Nah, isn't really a brilliant move. Knight takes b2, brilliant move. But here the, the the same tactic exists that made knight takes b2 possible, so I wouldn't really dub this a brilliant move. Computer thinks otherwise. I go h4. Here again e5 is an idea, which I missed. And if you take it, then I take the knight and I'm kind of okay, because this diagonal is now blocked off. But black doesn't have to take... Now, I was calculating knight d5 in some of these positions. But to be fair, here it takes and takes d4. It's still very bad for me. But maybe it was a better try. I went h4, though. Computer still likes h4. I'm trying to create some counterplay. And I mean, this counterplay in the end won me the game, right? Even if you're getting slaughtered on one side of the board in opposite side castling, you can't just defend for your life if it is a losing position. You have to try and do something. So a4, even if it looks incredibly scary, which this does. And after a4, I was so unsure. I think I mentioned the move e5, which um, again is an idea. By the way, I'm just going to go back to move 14 real quick. When I played f3, I rejected h4. On the basis of knight g4. But h5. And I am actually alright. Knight c3. Pawn c3. I'm actually creating some chances here. The problem is. After h4. There is still knight takes b2. With exactly the same ideas. But of course I didn't see this. Because I missed it in the first place. Anyway, just thought that was worth uh, mentioning. So, um, yeah, e5 is a move. 
but I did not go for this because I fought knight d5 and I still have way too many problems. Again, if my king takes, he doesn't even have to take here. He can just go b3 and everything is falling apart. Like, takes, bishop e5. My king's running out of squares. King c1, take on b3, take back on b3, queen b6. He's just coming in really, really quickly. Which is why I played queen takes b4, which is apparently the best move. Rook b8, queen a3, queen b6. King d2 is a move, but uh, knight c3 is also a move, but who plays knight c3 here? That's a bit odd looking in my opinion. I went for h5. I thought, again, this is a practical move because black has some problems here. And it's not super easy to actually solve them. If you play a nothing move, okay, e6 blocks off the diagonal. Let's just say you play a nothing move. I mean, rook b7, yeah, it prepares this, but here I'm going to take on g6. When you take back, remember this pawn is pinned, so the f pawn can't take back. I mean, I don't actually have a threat, but I don't know. Maybe I can generate something here. It's not. It's, it's not like completely clear cut for black because I do have an open h file against his king, which could be quite annoying. Again, computer's calling for moves like this. Like, okay. okay I've, I'm never going to find these, but sure. And one of the lines I was also thinking about was uh, queen, B <clears throat> queen b4. Because black is up a pawn, <clears throat> he might want to trade queens with me. But here I do have h takes g6, and if you take my queen, this is mate, this is also mate. So that would have been kind of cool. But of course he can just take back. And here I have nothing better than to trade queens. Apparently this is drawing. Even though I am down a pawn. But, eh, it makes sense. Maybe I'm going to go f4, f5 and try and create some problems on the king side for him. Honestly, I would not mind playing this position with white at all. I know there's no queens on the board, so it's hard for me to attack, but then it's also hard for him to attack. And I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like my f4, f5 pawn break is actually quite dangerous, especially because of this bishop, this rook, this knight, maybe even this knight, this bishop. I would take this with white. He doesn't let me off so easily, though. He plays knight takes d3 check, which is a really cool move. I take back. And he goes for knight takes e4. Funnily enough. Funnily enough. So there was three lines I was calculating. Bishop takes f7. F takes e4. And h takes g6. Right? These are the top three computer moves. They're, they're also really the only possible moves. So I'm not... This isn't me bragging. They're only the, the only really resource real resources white has here. The best move is to take here. Now I was unsure what you do after h takes g6. Apparently you take on e4 and if bishop b2 here, king d1, and if you take the queen, I mean you're getting mated obviously because like bishop takes, king moves and then discover check on the h file, which is what similar to what happened in the game. But this is actually like advantage white, because if you take like this, the move is d5 to block this bishop's scope. Bishop b2 check is still a threat. And white's got to be accurate here by blocking the diagonal off or moving the king. This would have been a really nice find from my opponent. After knight takes e4, the other move was bishop takes f7. But my problem was, after king takes f7, I can take the knight with check. I'm down I'm down two pawns, but I have an extra knight. But the problem is king to e6 or g8. And I lose that danger on the light squares. If king g8, queen a2 check doesn't work, because uh, the queen can block and... This pawn is looking very scary. My attack is gone. So I, I mean, I actually rejected um, 
this line on the basis of king e6. I kind of miss king g8. I, I rejected it based on king e6, which is actually apparently a better move. Because here, if I um, try and deliver some kind of check, the king just runs to d7, and I'm out of threats, and my king has zero cover, and this is still a problem, and this could be a problem, and this queen is causing problems, and his king is completely safe. So, I chose f takes e4. Again, missing this idea, but I played the second best move, f e4. And the position is tough for black, because remember, he has sacrificed two knights. He's down two knights for three pawns, right? But his bishops are very good, and my king is completely open. This was on my radar as a move, because if I would take it, there could be some attack with queen b2, but of course, this blunders mate in all variations. I was actually thinking here he might play bishop takes g3, sorry, d3, because if I take then queen to um, b2 check. Apparently that's okay for me, that line. He does pick up this bishop though. But that's still not a great move. Knight h5 is good. Which actually he probably should have played. Because this renews the threat of bishop b2 check. And it also gets rid of my counterplay. He definitely should have played that. But he didn't. He didn't. People aren't perfect, right? We take with the f pawn. I'm also not perfect. And bishop b2 check. The only move to maintain the advantage for black. This is apparently worse because queen a5 check is now available. King d1 is apparently better, but my plan with king d2 was to run over here if he tries to deliver me like this kind of check. I wanted to try and run to e3. d5 is the only winning move here for black. And let's be honest, who's finding d5? Uh, maybe you do, but that's a tough, tough move to play. This looks far more natural. I might just repeat... Well, I probably would repeat moves in this position because I look pretty damn losing. But he takes my queen. And now I'm winning. Now, I did check... No pun intended. Rook takes f7. But I reject this because a queen b2, king e3, queen a2, rook g7. If king to f8, then I have of checkmating attack, but if he goes to h8, h takes g6, if you take back, I don't even have good enough chances, but he doesn't have to take back. Here he has a completely devastating attack, because he has used the f file, so instead we take here with the bishop. So if queen b2 ever happens, he can't take my bishop. My I need my bishop. Now, he has a bishop pair, but his bishop pair are not protecting his king. So the only counterplay I really have is my rooks. And the fact that my bishops are very, very strong because his bishops are absent from the position. I was a little concerned about moves like bishop b2 at some point, trying to get his bishop back into the defense. But he didn't go for that. He didn't go for that. This position is drawn, apparently. Like a slight advantage for white, for base, but basically a draw. King h8. Here I have to take on g6. Of course I can't play like bishop takes e8. I'm down a queen. Like, I'm not... I, I don't want to win an exchange. I'm down a whole queen. Time is of the essence. h takes g6. If you take back, this is mate. So pretty. Because the bishops block the king from running away to the g-file. And you can't. You can't block my rook. So he plays queen b2 check. Here I find the best move for king e3. Bishop c5. I consider d4 here. But then the rook gets in. So again I play the best move. King f3. King f4 apparently loses to rook g8. Which is one of the defensive sources I was resources I was talking about. Why is this losing? I have no idea. What's the difference? If I go to f3 and then you go rook g8, then bishop f8 threatens me. Yeah, this is one of the plans I was looking at. Queen f6. Ah, but the difference is I can go knight f5? 
Wait. But couldn't I do that? But, sorry, I know this is a bit of a long-winded analysis, but this is one of, like, the really important things to do with a computer. Computer says King F4 is losing, King F3 is winning, but why? If I go to F4, what's the difference? Rook G8, Bishop F8 threatening mate, Queen F6, Knight F5, E5 check. So that's the difference. Why is that a big deal? Why is this a big deal? The E7, the E7 pawn isn't there. I don't know. I really want to try and figure this out. What's the difference? If King F3, Rook G8, oh, so here we don't go Bishop F8 because of the same line. Right, Bishop F8, Queen here, Knight here, here. Oh, here I'm mating? Oh, because I have Knight F4 check. So the King going to F3 gives the Knight the F4 square. And apparently, he is getting mated. <laughs> As if I saw that. As if. I played King F3 because I would I wanted to stay on the light squares. I think that was my reasoning. Yeah, it was a split second decision. Like I had like seven seconds, but I chose F3 because I thought on F5 E5 was potentially a threat or Queen E5, and so I wanted to keep my king on the light squares because this light squared bishop isn't really participating. Queen F6 check. I did consider knight F4, but I rejected it. Because I thought that king to G4, he has no more checks. I missed bishop C8. That is the only move to hold the draw. Because the problem is, if black plays a move like, I don't know, D5. Okay, his queen's hanging here. Let's say he saves the queen. Then he's getting mated. G7, Queen G7, Bishop G7, King G7. Oh, we have this whole shebang, do we? Knight to F5. We're cutting the king off from escaping, so Rook here is checkmate. And Black has zero defense. He can try and sack his pieces, but I just don't have to accept them. And the Rook can't even play a move like Rook G6. Obviously, if I take this, then Black is good. But I don't have to take it. I can just go here. And the rook can never get to a square which blocks the check. Because my knight controls this square. Right? So the king's defense does not matter. But he finds bishop c8. This is not good. I win knight f5. This is a blunder. I should have gone king h5. I did consider this move. But I thought why on earth would I block off my own h file? Why would I do that? So after queen f6 check, I needed to block the check with knight f4, and I just rejected this. Rook g8, knight f5, this is insane by the way. Look at the way my minor pieces are just crowding around his king, this is so cool. Bishop takes g d3? What? G7, Rook G7, Bishop G7, Queen G7, Knight G7, King G7, Knight D3, King F7, Knight C5, D C5, and this is obviously game over. Wow. So all I needed to do was block the file, and G7 was going to become too big of a problem. Because he's got to sack his queen. Especially if my knight comes into f5 to get even more control over g7. And of course he can never take because he's getting mated. I mean you can block with the queen first but this is mate. So you can never take it. 
King g4 though allows rook c8 and here I need to find king to h5. And after takes I take with the bishop and it's equal. Queen e5, knight f5, bishop f5, rook f5, queen b2. This is mental. R really? You trade and then go king to g6. <laughs> and if you take the knight, then it's game over. You're getting mated. That's, oh my god, what a game. What a game. So this loses to rook g8, which is what I was expecting. And if I now try to go g7, then you can take with the queen because my knight is pinned to my king. So I can't play g7 in this position. I also can't take because the pawn is pinned to my king. So I would need to take the rook. And if you take back with the king, there, there, this is winning. But you don't take back. You play king to h8. Again, this doesn't work because the knight is pinned to the king. So he's like rook h5. I still have chances. Somehow my king is just not getting mated, and his king is in a lot of trouble. This is absolutely insane. But he took on f5, and to be fair to him, it looks like a natural move. Oh my god, he's got so much pressure going on, I need to get rid of his attackers. Because if I get rid of his attackers, I'm up a queen. But it is a queen for two minor pieces. Yes, black has a couple extra pawns as well, but it's a queen for two minor pieces, so it's not that easy he takes on f5 though which like i said it is a logical move but he also spent eight seconds on it maybe you should have fought a bit longer we take with the rook we could take with the pawn but taking with the rook comes with tempo and renews the threat of g7 checkmate because if he moves the queen well it's actually better to play bishop f8 i i did actually see this in a couple of lines and you can't take because this is mate. I just open up the file and the king can't move because I cover the g8 square. So... Best move is to take on g6. And bishop takes. You take back then rook f7. This is... I mean, I've got some big threats here. But I am also up a piece and I have a big attack on your king. He wants to give up a rook. So that's pretty dire. But he took the rook, which is quite a natural move. We take back. And in this position, we have two minor pieces for a rook. The game, yeah, I, I, I just have my material back. Because he wasn't actually up a queen. He was up a queen for two minor pieces and a couple pawns. Once he has to sack the queen, it's game over. And he makes it quick. By taking on g6. Bishop to f8 is checkmate. We went down an entire queen and we still managed to pull this game back. This was definitely not a clean game. And maybe my opponent deserved to win this. This is a very thorough analysis as well because there was just so much going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I wasn't too I there wasn't too like long or boring or anything. And yeah. Uh, we are just under the hour mark, so. Go get on with your day, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.